they the little brother of NASA. Uh, it's a governmental organization. Okay. Uh, in the far future, mankind will travel to Moon and Mars eventually. I think there is no doubt about that. Uh, closed habitats will be really essential for this uh, kind of endeavor. Within those closed habitats, we will have greenhouses. What you see here are some artist impressions of those greenhouses, or I would say those extraterrestrial greenhouses. We will produce higher plants in those greenhouses in order to, to uh, decrease the uh, resupply rate. Um, our research group, uh, DLR, uh, um, is called EDEN, and uh, we're basically doing system analysis with respect to human spaceflight. Uh, we're looking into bioregenerative life support systems. Uh, in particular, here we're looking into high, cultivation of higher plants, because the higher plants are the only system, I would say, that can really close all three loops. We can close, we can purify water, we can regenerate the air, and we can produce uh, food. So it's something like an all-in-one approach. Uh, in order to achieve that, uh, we're looking into controlled environmental aquaculture technologies, and we also develop them. And of course, we're also looking into terrestrial applications, and here the most promising thing is vertical farming. Okay, so we did a study for vertical farming, and I have the report here. It's now freshly printed. Uh, our study objectives that we had um, well, first of all, okay, technical feasibility of a vertical farm. Uh, we wanted to do a showcase scenario and fish production. A showcase scenario was we didn't want to do a monocrop production like only potatoes or only tomatoes, but more like a, a basket of, of uh, different crops. So we decided to go for 10 different crops. Um, furthermore, um, we wanted to apply closed loop applications. So we really wanted to regenerate everything. Even the, the water that was uh, evapotranspirated by the plants is recovered in our system. Uh, also the inedible biomass is uh, uh, fish uh, food and so on and so on. Okay, and of course, detailed cost analysis. We wanted to see, does it really make sense on an economical uh, base? Okay, we applied a concurrent engineering study in Bremen, in Germany. Uh, you see here, uh, this is our design facility. Uh, uh, concurrent engineering is used in the aerospace business for phase A studies, which is basically a preliminary study, a first estimate, first calculations. Uh, rapid design process, only a week uh, we did this. And we had to divide the, uh, the system of a vertical farm in different subsystems and then assign the subsystem to one expert. So what you see here is the... Um, we had 12 experts. Uh, we had one for nutrient delivery, one for environmental control, uh, biology, plant selection, cost analysis, structure and configuration. So we had all those experts together uh, for one week to design this vertical farm. So and this is what came out. This is our vertical farm. This is the first time that we show this in, in public. It's a footprint building, 44 times 44 meters. Uh, footprint, 2,000 square meters roughly. Height, 170 meters. Uh, 37 floors, five beneath ground, and we only use artificial light. So we're not going into any hybrid or uh, using the sunlight. We're really going into the artificial uh, cultivation process. Okay, so if we cut away the, the outer hull of the vertical farm, uh, we see here the, the inner shell of it. Um, uh, let me briefly show you a little bit what we have. We have 25 cultivation floors. Uh, three fish cultivation floors, three environmental cultivation, uh, three uh, environmental floors. What you see here, here, and here. Uh, I come to that later. Uh, waste management floors, where we want to process the, the inedible biomass. Germination floor. I also come to that later. Food processing floor. We have to do some process before we can sell them in the store. And of course, in the basement, we have a supermarket. Uh, just for the sake of completeness, here this is the sh showcase selection that we have used. Uh, four uh, levels of letters, three of tomatoes, and so on and so on. Okay, so um, if we cut the building in half, uh, what you see is that we have several air circulation sections. You know we wanted to do apply closed loop uh, applications, so we really want to use the wet air to get the water out of the air. So what we have, always seven to ten levels are connected to one environmental control floor. Uh, and in the middle, we have a big central air shaft where the fresh air is pumped down to the uh, plant cultivation floors, is then going through the floors, and then on the outside of the building, back to the, uh, to the con um, environmental control floors. 
Okay, so what you see here uh, are now the different floors that we have designed. I cannot go in all the different floors because the time is too short for that. I'll just show you some, uh, some highlights. Okay, first of all, uh, before we start, uh, we're using grow lids uh, for cultivation. Uh, we will design a specific grow lid. It's a, basically a one square meter plastic uh, 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 grow lid. Uh, and we will have a grow lid for every specific plant that we are cultivating. This is because we, every plant has its specific morphological plant parameters. So for example, we use this one for, for letters, spherical, uh, need a lot of space. And this one perhaps for, for radish. So we use them for, for cultivating them. We, we place the seeds in there, and then we bring them in the germination unit that you see here. This is a germination unit. We have a big germination section where we place all the grow lids in a special cultivation box. In there, it's warm, wet, uh, so we leave it there for like a week or two weeks until the first sprouts have developed, the first root system has developed, and then we pull them out and bring them to the plant cultivation floors. We also have a cleaning section to clean them after harvesting. We have a small laboratory for doing some tests, a workshop, of course, seed storage area, and a seeding uh, station. Okay, so we bring them now to the plant cultivation floor. Every plant cultivation floor looks the same. Uh, we have four, four different sections, A, B, C, and D. They are independently controlled to each other. So we can harvest... Uh, we, uh, every plant in one section has the same life cycle state, but they can verify from, from section to section. Uh, therefore, we have a nutrient delivery room with a fertilizer mix computer for every section. We also have an LED uh, ex uh, heat exchanger system for the LED systems. And in the middle, you see the, the big uh, air ventilation system for the fresh air. Okay, so what you see, the green, the green grow units that you see here, they, those are, this is a close-up. Uh, we came up, we wanted to do it really integrated, really highly integrated, put a lot of plants in a small volume. So we came up with this idea that you might know from, uh, from libraries or archives, uh, like those movable shelves. So that's what we came up. We can use them to really have a, a compressed uh, volume of uh, plants, but we still can go there and can do harvesting procedures or maintenance procedures. 67 uh, grow units per floor adds up to 1,900 grow units uh, for the whole vertical farm. Of course, what you see here is just one, one example. Uh, it depends on the specific plant. For so example, potatoes, we only have three layers. For lettuce, we have six. So it always depends uh, 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 what kind of crop uh, we are cultivating. Okay, so... Um, the, the, the fresh air comes in here, it, goes out, it flows through the, uh, the cultivation sections, and then the wet air is going here through the air channel to the environmental control floors, what you see here. Okay, we were a space engineer, so we want to really do everything to, to close the cycle. So what we are doing here is, here's the inlet. It's also similar build-up like the plant cultivation floors, also four sections. The wet air comes in here, goes to, through the dehumidifier plates. Uh, we're cooling down the air until the water is condensating. We recover the air. Uh, then we have a trace gas separation filter to get rid of the ethylene as much as possible. And then the, uh, uh, through the central air shaft, it goes back to the plant cultivation floors. Optional, we can, uh, we can let in fresh air or get uh, used air out of the building. You see here a close-up of the, of the rooftop. Um, here you see again the different tubes, the air tubes that are going from the plant cultivation floors to the, to the environmental control floor. And since there is a lot of thermal load that we have to get rid of, we have on the rooftop building uh, heat dissipation units, uh, quite some of them. We will later see how much energy we need for that. Okay, um, we're also doing fish cultivation. I'm not going too much into detail here. Uh, we have three of those floors, uh, um, several cultivation tanks, 3.5 meters to 7 meters in diameter. Uh, we're cultivating tilapia fish here, basically, because they are quite nice to, to our inedible biomass. They, they basically eat everything. Okay, um, once the, uh, the, 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 we harvest the fish and harvest the crops, it has to go to the food processing facility. That's what you see here. Uh, basically, um, we, we are cleaning it here in this uh, food processing facility. We, we can pack it. We can store it here in, the, in, in a storage area. 
Uh, we have the same thing for fish cleaning facility with a cold storage area. Of course, we need a control room. We need break rooms for the employees, uh, office areas. So everything is here in this uh, food processing facility. The inedible biomass is put here in the waste chute, which goes down in the basement to the waste management system, which is here. We have two waste management systems. First one uh, consists of five biodomes where we want to generate uh, biogas. Um, so the, uh, the, the inedible biomass comes in here. This is the other end of the waste chute. Uh, it's going to be pre-processed. We shred it down so that we can better process it. Then uh, some of the biomass, of the inedible biomass, goes to the biodomes. Some are going to the fertilizer facility, which is basically fermentation tubes in order to produce uh, uh, organic uh, fertilizer. And we have in the middle, we don't have an air shaft here, but a freight elevator so that the forklift can move between the different levels. Uh, second manage, uh, waste management floor, also biodomes again. But here we have a gas separation unit that separates the CO2 from the methane because during the biogas uh, production process, we also produce a CO2, which we can, of course, uh, use in the system again. But I can already say now, uh, we're not producing enough uh, CO2 for the whole building, so we have to buy additional CO2 in. Okay, um, let's do some number crunching. Uh, production calculation. Basically, what we did, uh, we used the advanced life support baseline values assumption document from NASA for our calculations. Uh, we were doing uh, aeroponic cultivation procedures, par specific LED lighting, CO2 injection, and we added up uh, a small percentage because the values from, from this document are from 2004, but the values were generated during the 90s. So they're quite relatively old, so we wanted to add this up, uh, and we added a factor of 1.4 to the overall uh, production. Okay, so here are now the values uh, that we came up for this building. Footprint, 2,000 square meters. If we had add up all the different layers uh, in our shelf system, we come to 93,000 uh, square meters of total grow area. Edible biomass that we can produce per year is 4,900 tons, which is uh, uh, three, 13 tons per day. Uh, inedible, 3,300. Uh, edible Fish, really the fish fillet, On, only the fish fillet is uh, 100 tons per year, uh, waste 400 tons, which is rather a bad uh, harvest index. Methane, also not so important, uh, 7, uh, 720,000 uh, cubic meters, and carbon dioxide, 360,000 cubic meters. Okay, um, resources, uh, water circulation. Basically, our system doesn't really need that much water. Uh, all, the only water, in theory, that goes out of the building is the edible and inedible biomass that leaves the building more or less. So that's what we have to put in. But circulating, like irrigation water, is 8.3 million liters a year. Since we are recovering all the water from the air, that comes with a price, uh, with an energy price. <laughs> and what you see here, our, our building needs peak, meaning every lights are on, and the environmental control floors are running at full capacity. Uh, we need 21 megawatts to run this building. Of course, this is not uh, that important because what is important is the, en the daily energy uh, demand, which is uh, 413,000 kilowatt hours. We also did some calculations for uh, the personnel that we need in the building. Thanks. Uh, it's uh, 60, uh, 40, the core team, and 20 for uh, the backup team. Of course, we need seats, spare parts, and so on. Okay, cost analysis. Uh, we did a cost analysis, first of all, for building up the, uh, the, the whole structure. Uh, we, we used the parametric cost uh, tool for especially designed for buildings. And uh, we, we used that and we came up that only the building, uh, 170 meters height, uh, needs uh, 140 million dollars or euros. Well, it's, we, we did it in euros. Uh, 140 million euros only to build the structure with already all the elevators, stairways, harness, and so on. Then we need to equip the different levels. Uh, here we did a bottom-up approach. Uh, we had an equipment list. Uh, we did assumptions like what do we need. So we added all that up. And basically the most expensive one was lighting, LED systems, uh, 85 million euros only for the, for the light system. It all adds up to 284 millions for building up the vertical farm. Um, we then did a, a, over 30 years annuity calculation that is an annual 
uh, uh, cost that we have to, to, to make available of 14 million euros. Why do we need this? Because we also calculated the annual cost of the building. And here you have again our initial uh, uh, 14 uh, million euros uh, for, for the building every year, over 30 years. Then we came up, of course, equipment breakdown. We have to replace equipment. So what we did, we, we used the equipment cost, the total, and we said 10%, it has to be replaced. It's quite conservative. I don't think that it is that much, but uh, we wanted to be on the safe side. Again, most expensive uh, is uh, power, uh, especially for water recovery and light. Uh, we use 16 cents per kilowatt hours, which is a basic German uh, industry uh, um, uh, uh, rate. Uh, this is already includes all the taxes and everything. Then resources, of course, seeds, water, fertilizer, additional, uh, and personnel, even personnel, was not that expensive. Okay, uh, we used here 40,000 uh, uh, euros per person per year. Okay, so let's come to uh, profitability. 62 million euros. Um, we add now up everything. Let's take the fish, let's take the, cro uh, the crops, do a nice basket, uh, and do the math. 12 euros, 54, uh, 55, 45, sorry. Uh, yeah, you see the, the value here. So this is quite something, I know. But we have really included everything. Like, no water is actually leaving the building instead of the, only the, the fresh fruit that is going out. We did some scenario analysis. Uh, we put away the fish farms. See, no, no, really, nothing changed, really. We put away the fish farm and the waste management floors. Put all the costs out. No change. We even put out the water recovery, slightly changing, 9 euros 88, not that much. So then we, we designed a small spreadsheet, Excel sheet, to do some simulations, and we really cut everything out. We, we, we fired half of the staff, we, we did all the, the nice stuff, nice to have thing, all out. But we, we had a natural, we, we found out that there is a threshold by 3 to 5 euros per kilogram of biomass edible biomass. So this was really like the, the lowest we could go. Okay, but let's do a comparison. Uh, last two slides. Uh, we, we did a comparison. Um, we calculated how much vertical, how much agricultural land do we need to fulfill the, the, the output of the vertical farm. So we used, we, we looked at all our uh, showcase uh, plants and we looked how much do we have to produce the same amount that the vertical farm can produce. And we have footprint, 2,000 square meters, 4,900 tons per year. To do it uh, on agricultural land, we need 216 hectares, uh, or 2.16 million square meters. This is an increase or decrease factor of 1,000, over 1,000. So this is something we can also, I think, uh, is showable. All right, so they asked me to, to what is the, the German Aerospace Center things uh, that we should further investigate. Um, so first of all, we have to look into analytical optimum of the building design. There are special uh, software engine tools to do that, to find the optimal design in order to have a really sustainable building that has low energy uh, demands. Then, very important, we have to look into production processes. We really have to look into this, especially decontamination processes. Uh, if you look in the internet, vertical farming, the one of the advantages is always we don't need pesticides. Uh, we, we, can, we, can, we don't need them. But that's not true. If once the, the animals are in there, the fungus or the, the insects, they are in and they are not going away. So we have to find innovative uh, techniques to get rid of those uh, um, uh, plagues, I would say. Then um, light and nutrient recipes. This is really an important thing, especially for optimized growth under a CEA regime. We really have to get, we have to develop cookbooks or handbooks for specific plant types, how to do strawberries, how to do uh, potatoes, especially since light and nutrients are always going hand in hand. Then, of course, energy saving techniques. One example could be LED shutter technologies, you know, where you take the LED and you put them on a frequency so they go on and off, on and off uh, in, a special, in a specific frequency. Uh, the plant usually don't recognize that, but you have a be much better duty cycle and you can save some, some energy with that. And then, last but not least, the most important question is the question of efficiency. We really have to be honest here on this, on this thing. We have to see how much energy do we put in, 
how much resources do we have to put in, and what do we get out? What is the kilogram price? So here we really have to be uh, uh, honest with ourselves and don't have, um, hope that there is no uh, showstopper. Okay, and with that, I would like to complete. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. We um, have time for a few questions. Yes? In your uh, design of the envelope the structure, did you contemplate any building integrated photovoltaics? Yeah, yes, we, we thought about this, but we, we didn't do that. Um, in the outlook, we described it a little bit that that could be a possibility, but uh, 15 megawatts, this is quite something. Um, even for the gas turbines, for example, they only produce, I think, 10,000 kilowatt hours a year, which is not that much. So, uh, yeah, but for future studies, we will consider that as well. Also, wind turbines on the roof. Is this presentation available on the web? Uh, it will be. I know, shall I choose? Okay. I know. Oh. <laughs> uh, just a quick clarification. Did I see that you were projecting 60 employees to run that entire building? Yeah. Uh, tw uh, 40 for the core team, 20 as backup. Including harvesting, planting, the whole nine yards? Yeah. We, we, we looked at all the different levels, all the different uh, floors, and then the, the engineers had to come up with an estimate how many people do we need. And uh, the people who were responsible for the harvesting, they came up, they, they did a small simulation tool, like how many harvest events do we have, and how, many, how long do you need to, to harvest one tray, and so on. And so this, uh, that's how we came up with the number. Yeah. One last question, and then we need to move on. Did you calculate how much energy outdoors it would take to raise the same amount of food as your building? No, we haven't. But you should do that. We that's could do that. That's true, yeah. Just to save yeah. unfair prices the energy. That is true. All right. Thank you, Daniel. I'm sorry, but we need to move on. Um, he will be available later for the panel.